Hi, welcome to Take 5, a daily Bible time studying the New Testament by chapters. Today is March 5th, and we're in Acts chapter 23. I am on trial for the hope and resurrection of the dead, Acts 23, verse 6. The events of Acts 23 immediately follow Paul having shared his testimony of God saving him on the road to Damascus. For Jews to hear of God being spoken to Gentiles absolutely, absolutely sent them over the edge due to national pride and heritage. Due to this erupting so quickly over Paul's words, the Roman soldiers again seized him and prepared to beat the truth out of him as to why this all stirred up so quickly. But they stopped dead in their tracks at learning him to be a Roman citizen. You don't beat your own citizens. That is reserved for foreigners. Now, the commander is completely confused, deciding it would be best for the Jewish council to address their grievances with Paul. This is where chapter 23 begins, Paul before the Sanhedrin. The intent behind Luke's concentration in describing Paul's demeanor at, at that moment is to convey his having absolutely no fear of his accusers. Paul looked intently at them. His confidence is supported by so many Bible verses. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the defense of my life. Whom shall I dread? The Lord will fight for you while you keep silent. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not anxiously look about you, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Scripture after scripture, promise after promise, Paul had nothing about which to worry as he stood before the leaders of the Jews. As a Pharisee, Paul had stood with these men. It was from them he had received letters of permission to go search out and arrest those who were followers of Jesus. Paul likely recognized many of them, and they as well knew him. A lot can change over time. A lot more changes once a person is saved. These former friends are recognized now as enemies of God. Being that it's not possible to lash out directly at God, the best next thing to do is to strike out at God's followers, his children. Friendship finds its reality with God. In him, life takes direction. Paul makes a simple statement. I have lived my life with a perfectly good conscience before God up to this day. My conscience is clean. The ramification is gigantic with regard to the forgiveness of self, for Paul had sent countless number of Christians to death, but that was life prior to his own salvation. His perfectly good conscience began with his sins being washed away by the blood of Jesus. John the Apostle wrote, The blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sins. Isaiah said, Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. God told Jeremiah, Their sins I will remember no more. Paul had to stand solidly on the word of God, believing that for all the atrocities to mankind and against the kingdom of God which he had committed, they were forgiven by the power of the cross. Paul's words of having no condemnation for sin before God drew the slapping of his face from the priests around him. How dare he be able to claim such confidence of finished forgiveness, for they continued being bound to the routine of offering the blood of animals as a temporary solution until the coming of the Savior. Paul is trying to get them to see there being no need to offer blood of earthly animals, of earthly lambs any longer, for the Lamb of God has come and was slain for the sins of mankind. This is why Paul sarcastically says in verse 5, I was not aware, brethren, that he was a high priest, for it is written, You shall not speak evil of the, a ruler of your people. For that is all they continued to do, was speak evil of the ruler, the high priest, the Lord Jesus. Paul refused to recognize any priest above Christ, for as Peter said, There is no other name under heaven that has been given among men, by which we must be saved. When Peter spoke these words, it says that he had the look of confidence about him. Stephen, in facing death, was seen with his face to be the face of an angel. God has for his children a peace which surpasses all comprehension that will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. There need not be any situation in life that shakes us, for if God be for us, who can be against us? The response is, 
no one. Thanks for being here today. And now may God's grace and peace be ours as we seek to live our utmost for his highest. Have a great day. and We'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.